Welcome to another Auto Spec Renew video. Today I am with Alex Howard and his fantastic London cab fully converted to electric. So Alex, tell us everything about your cab, how, how it started, what's your project, did you do any other of them, what's the plan? So uh, yeah, we started four years ago now and uh, the London cab struck us as the uh, prime candidate for electrification. Um, there are still thousands of them um, running in London. Dirty, um, four-cylinder diesel. <laughs> horrible, noisy, rattly, vibrating diesel engines which need to go. So, um, yeah, we converted the, this to uh, full electric. We've got, so when um, you say we, uh, what's the company name? So the company name's Clipper, Clipper Automotive. Yeah, um, um, yeah so, and uh, we've got uh, three of these on the road. And we're currently doing um, test runs in them. Okay. And looking for um, uh, local authorities, councils who want them up and running in their cities. Okay. For clean electric transport for the 21st century. All right. So it is charging currently at a Shademo charger at grid serve. We are north of London. And why do you use Shademo? Tell us everything about the drivetrain. Okay. Well, um, it's basically the, the, the Nissan Leaf drivetrain. Um, uh, modified, so we've integrated the the Nissan motor with the with the, the taxi drivetrain, um, and um, uh, adapted the control system and built our own uh, vehicle control unit okay. to enable it to integrate with the taxi systems that we want to keep. So you have repurposed uh, electric motor, inverter, and battery modules. Yeah, and we've got other components from other vehicles like a onboard AC charger from Tesla. Um, DC DC converted to Mitsubishi, that sort of thing. So we mm. try and choose the uh, components that are proven, robust components that are going to be good for you know commercial applications, which is what we do. All right, uh, let's go for a tour, but let's start under the bonnet. And uh, okay. so you have two battery packs, twenty kilowatt hour yeah, this one each. Has, yeah, exactly, two twenty kilowatt hour battery packs. Um, uh, 20 in the front and 20 in the back. So the green, uh, the green box is 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 20 kilowatt hours okay. of batteries. Um, so this is your prototype vehicle. And, uh, it's, and, a, it's a production ready prototype. Yeah, okay. in that we've got uh, three of these that are, that are exactly the same. Okay. Um, with exactly the same system, and we've done uh, probably approaching like 20,000 miles now on on this wow. on this system on this drive train. Um, so yeah, we've. Um, Taxi's uh, quite special because it's got a very tight turning circle. Yep. So it was quite a, a challenge getting the getting the batteries and the and the drive train into the front. It's so probably... this uses a very traditional chassis, so a square tube chassis. Yeah. And you were telling me before we start filming, the front of the chassis is very narrow, uh, just yeah. so you can have the wheel turning so much. Yes. But it makes a challenge um, installing the system or at least the battery. Yes. Uh, in the engine bay. Yes, because you've got quite, you've actually got quite a narrow engine bay, which used to have the the, the, the diesel engine in it. Um, uh, yeah. So and, anything um, else under the bonnet we need to see? I mean, really. obviously the charge I mean, ports. Put the charge the ports yeah. in the front. So we've got Chadamo and, and the and the standard AC, the electric pumps that that we that we put in for the for the steering mechanism and the brake header, and there's a um, cooling pump underneath. So, yeah. Did you keep the power and torque figure uh, identical from the Nissan Leaf? Uh, we upped it slightly, okay. actually, because the taxi, the taxi is slightly heavier. Okay. So right. we tried to match the you know the horsepower that was in the, the original diesel engine. Okay. Um, and just like any classic car conversion, the interior looks uh, original. Yeah. Obviously, there's no gear shifter. No. You have a, a knob. Yeah. Uh, but you still have the old school um, needle type uh, binnacle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. And we, we put this uh, this screen in just to um, to give you um, information about the state of charge, the battery, and so on. Okay. The uh, passenger compartment is is exactly the same. So. You would, uh, you know, it's ready, ready for work, basically. Yeah. So you got four seats and plenty of room for luggage, and yeah. even some more on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So the traditional so jump seats, yeah. 
um, London cab layout. Yeah. Right. Let's check out the other battery check pack. Out. Yeah, the other, the other half of the batteries is in the, is yeah. in the boots. All right. Uh, the boot normally is just used for, for a spare wheel. Um, we either don't have a spare wheel, we, you know, we go to the, the get out of jail cam, or we, we sometimes sling it underneath where, okay. the, where the fuel tank used yeah. to be. Um, it's actually quite a narrow space. They, they never use it for, for a battery, for um, luggage. For luggage, okay. Yeah. So what type of range do you get with this system, with 40 kilowatt hour? Yeah, we're getting uh, about uh, 100 plus miles on okay. this. We reckon we should be able to get up to about 120. Which is about what a, a, a driver drives every day, 100 miles? Yes, yeah. exactly. In London? So an average yeah. Yeah. shift for a London cab is, is only 100 miles. Or okay. 100 miles. Uh, so, so, yeah, perfect city centre. So, what's the plan for London and maybe other location in the UK and maybe around the world? What's the plan? Yeah, so, uh, so we, we want to make these taxis available for um, towns and cities that you know, would like to have a, a fleet of taxis like this um, operating, um, you know, in, in their, their city centres. Uh, we'd like to get it licensed in London to convert the, the, the diesels that are left in London. Yeah. Uh, there currently isn't a an all-electric London taxi available. Which is odd because London was one of the first city, if not the first city, to charge, um, you know, diesel cars if they were driving yes, yeah for yes. the ULES so the ultra low emission zone yeah. yet all the London traditional cab are <laughs> big diesel polluters so that's yeah, uh, quite all, all ironic the new ones are petrol hybrids yeah still not electric so not yeah, really electric. yeah a, a conversion system is a fantastic option it's, it's so we want to see way more of those uh, classic iconic yeah. London cab so what are the other options so have you considered working on other platform besides the taxi cabs here, vans or other That's applications? Exactly that. So we're now looking to trans uh, to transport the the same drivetrain into other commercial okay. vehicle applications. Uh, we think it's a very robust system that we've developed, and it can be very good for converted, um, you know, vans and minibuses. Um, so van, vans that have been invested in already that have valuable kit on board okay. you make perfect candidates for, for conversion. Because sometimes the con like converting a, a car with a specialty application, it's way cheaper to convert it to electric than to buy a brand new truck as a base and then spend another 150,000 US dollars or sterling pound. So it makes sense for certain application like uh, bank uh, vans are yeah. other application cherry pickers and cherry pickers, yeah, yeah. ambulances vans with refrigeration on yeah. vans that people love that camper vans that they've spent thousands of converting in all of these True, yeah. uh, you know need to be converted to all electric have you considered uh, shipping those abroad? Because obviously tourists, they love th yeah, those cars and, and some other countries use them, to be fair. Uh, what could be other application uh, outside vans and taxi cabs? Yeah, I mean, we, we, could, we could export these you know, vehicles like this because they, when the vehicles are de-licensed from London, um, they're quite cheap. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so that, so you know, by upcycling them to all electric, you know, we're, cre we're creating a, uh, you know, a very very useful and very valuable asset. So, what's the business model? Do you sell to cities? Would you sell individual uh, cabs to drivers? How does it work? Well, we we want to convert vehicles for drivers. Most of these are actually owned by individual drivers. Okay. Um, but also we're looking for to to set up a trial with a city so that we you know establish a, a dozen cabs and they can let their drivers try and see if they like it and then you know, build the Nice, and yeah. Um, but we we're also being asked to, to convert other wheelchair accessible vehicles. Ah, yes, yeah. Um, particularly the the um, long wheelbase minibuses with the with the lifts on the back. So okay. we're going to put the, the, the same system into that those vehicles and. Um, uh, you know, offer full electric minibuses for uh, you know, a fraction of the cost and a tiny fraction of the carbon footprint. <laughs> All right, so I think it's time for, to take it for a spin. Yeah. All right. Um, because we've got um, we've built our own vehicle control units and we've got control of the inverter, 
we're enabled to to modify the, the drivetrain in a number of ways. Um, we we were able to um, adapt the the original Nissan inverter um, stack and um, modify the, the the fixed gear that it came with to give us the um, our, our new drive shaft that comes out of that gearbox uh, that gives us the, the right gear re ratio that we need for this vehicle and um, we we're actually able to to mount the motor um, by 45 degrees and run it backwards um, okay <laughs> so this in the end fits a, a traditional drive shaft and then a differential and the rear wheels yeah exactly so we kept the differential mm -hmm. because the the taco and the meter run off that mm -hmm. we want to minimize the cost of the of the conversion to make these commercially viable it's really important that um we we simplify the conversion process as much as possible and um and make it scalable so that mm -hmm. every single taxi that we do would be exactly the same okay um, and we're able to also with the the modifications that I just described, we're able to to, to take that this drivetrain, this platform, if you like, and uh, take it into other vehicle types, and um, uh, modify the orientation and fit it to that vehicle with relative ease. But what I find fantastic is you manage to keep those old school taxi cab on the road with an electric drivetrain that you are repurposing so it's the best of both well i, I appreciate that down the line you may need to use brand new drivetrain yeah. as you scale but right now those few taxi cabs are 100 percent electric use parts from different com uh, different components from um, cars that would not be on the road anymore so fantastic yeah. project I, I really love it I, I look forward to coming back and see where you're heading by the end of the year and hopefully see vans and more cabs in London and uh, I'll see you then yeah oh that's Peppy yeah. <laughs> and you can hear a lot more of the kind of the, the you know the peculiar noises of the taxi like the have, uh, yeah, well, just like converted classic cars, it yeah, just the exactly. metal against metal yeah. <laughs> type of bodywork. Mm -hmm. So, why did you choose to start converting a taxi with no background in uh, car um, electrification? Well, um, I was I was quite involved in clean air campaigns within London, and um, uh, I've got school aged kids, so I cycled in London, and I, I couldn't really believe that these diesel vehicles were still operating so um, looked into it and uh, um, and re realized it could be done um, but nobody was doing it so found a co-founder we put down some money built a prototype and, and proved that it's doable yeah so do you know why no one else was doing it before Um, I don't know, Not, nobody's bloody minded enough. To... <laughs> because yeah, yeah, you have to overcome the technical aspect of it yeah, and then yeah. find a, a business model and yeah. find investors. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's a few, there's quite a few um, moving parts to it. Yeah. I mean, finding investors is tricky. We're still, we're still looking for investors okay. to help us bring this to market properly. Um, the, the techni technically, it's a big challenge. The, the integration at the, um, uh, the vehicle control level, uh, you know, is is, is, a, is a is a tough thing to do. Um, even though the you know the, the electric um, drivetrain is in a way beautifully simple, you know, the control systems are quite complex. So you're talking about investor, what is the next step for the company and um, how people can find information about you guys? Yeah, so look at, look us up, Clipper Automotive. Yeah. Um, we are, we're currently looking for investors. We have an investment round open. Um, we uh, specifically want to um, fulfill orders we have for converting, for taking this system into um, wheelchair accessible minibuses and um, uh, bringing those to market, converting perfectly good vehicles um, apart from the combustion engine and um, you know providing more uh, clean electric transportation for 
um, you know, a, a greater variety of people who can't normally access it. All right. So yeah. Come and join me. <laughs> All right, guys, fantastic project. If you want to know more about those guys, check them out. And if you like what you saw today, let us know in the comments below. If you want to see more of those interesting uh, niche market projects, we want to cover them all. Guys, I'll see you in the next one.